Hello, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little video tutorial uh, and in this vid video tutorial we will have a situation where we are running on a dual boot Windows 7 Linux computer. The Linux that we'll be running will be CentOS 6.4. Um, when the video starts we'll be up and running in Windows 7 what we would like to do is to be able to remotely restart the machine and have the machine boot into Linux. This video will show you a way to modify the grub.conf file on a machine that is running grub2 and reboot a machine that is currently running Windows 7 and have the machine boot up into Linux which will in our case be CentOS 6.4 and let's see how it goes here and we'll get started I've already done a remote desktop into uh, the machine that is running Windows 7 and uh, first thing we'll look at is um, I'm running some software called EX2FSD and we're going to go into the EXT2 uh, volume manager and every time you go in there uh, it asks if it's okay to make changes uh, and I believe you actually have to be running from an administrator ID for all this uh, to work and if you want to make changes at least so I'm going to actually click here um, I have a 750 megabyte uh, partition that's where I keep my slash boot from my Linux and that's what controls the uh, menu when you make a selection as to which operating system to boot and I'll do a right click on that and I'm going to go to ext2 file manage ext2 management I'll click on that tab and one of the things you need to check is uh, a lot of times when I reboot in fact I think all the time it comes up and says mount volume in read-only mode I want to click that and turn that off because I want to make a change on the uh, this file partition so I'll click apply and then yes I want to enable writing support and there it tells me it made the changes and I'm done with that portion now I use a, um, something called GVIM GNU -Vim. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I trust this uh, VI type of um, program. It's a text editor. I trust this to actually edit my text files on my uh, ext2 or ext3 or ext4 file systems. So I'll double click and uh, I'll click File, Open, and then I'm going to come down here to the F uh, partition. I'm going to go into the grub directory and I'm going to open the grub.conf file. You'll see a file down here with a little tilde. Uh, that's a little leftover file that uh, is created if you use this GVIM program and edit the grub.conf. You'll also get this if you edit uh, a f this little tilde type uh, file if you use something like gedit over on the Linux side. So I'll click open and uh, what I want to do now is I want to uh, take a look at, you'll see that there's two, li two lines here that say title. There's one that says title CentOS 6.4 and one that says title Windows 7. Uh, you'll see, when you start the machine you're going to see a menu, a grub menu and it will give you two different options as to what operating system you would like to start the machine. Now you can, well, the this first title uh, is numbered within Grub as being zero. The numbering starts at zero. The second title is one. If you had other operating systems that were booting on the machine, you could have multiple title lines, and it would be zero for the CentOS, one for the Windows, the next title line would be two, next title line would be three. In our case we only have two operating systems here. This 
you'll see a line here that says default that uh, equals one. The default equals one is referring to the uh, Windows 7 title line. If you remember zero and one, so that's the Windows 7 uh, title line. We want it to default boot into the CentOS 6.4 operating system, uh, which is the first one in the list. And again, the numbering starts at zero. So use your um, uh, use your mouse if you wish, and come and and click here on the one and get the uh, number one highlighted. Um, if you know how to use VI, you can you know use your VI keys to move around. Once you have the number one highlighted, type a small r, a little r, and then a zero, and what this is going to do is that refers to the, the CentOS 6.4 title line. Now the small r and the zero, uh, that's coming into play because I'm using uh, a VI type of editor. If you use a different type of editor, you'll, you'll have different commands, uh, obviously, to make the change. Now, in order to save this file, well, we're going to hit the escape uh, key and then we're going to hold down the shift key and hit the colon. We'll hit the W to type a small w. That's I mean, and you'll see it appear down here next to the colon in the lower left hand corner. And then an exclamation mark. And then enter. And then you'll see that it uh, has been written. Now to exit, you can either type file and then exit or you can hit the escape key again and a colon this puts you into command mode that little colon down there in the left hand side and then type a small q and an exclamation mark and that will take you out of the file okay we've made the necessary change to the grub.conf file to get the system to reboot into Linux now what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the control and the alt keys and then hit the delete key. And when you do that you should get a screen that looks similar to what you see uh, in, in the video here. In the lower right hand corner you're going to see a little red uh, stop button and you'll see a little up arrow. We want to click on the up arrow and then we're going to click the word restart. and the machine is now restarting. We're going to pause the video for a few minutes while the machine reboots and we'll be back in one second. Okay, we've given the machine OS Flip a few minutes to reboot, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to check and make sure that we can connect into it. I'm actually going to use uh, uh, something called NX uh, to connect into the machine. Um, the machine OS Flip is running a free NX server and it, it's kinda cool. It gives me the whole um, it gives me the whole uh, desktop experience. So anyways uh, on the YouTube under Mr. Linux Info is information on setting up uh, an NX server and um, NX client. You can uh, also do a lot of what we're doing here with uh, SSH. So I'll double click on the uh, window to get to go into the machine with NX and we'll go ahead and run NX. Ah good this well this is illustrative. Um, I am actually getting an error with my NX and I'm going to show you how you can fix that error. We'll bring up the uh, window here, uh, the terminal window, and what we'll do is we'll go in with SSH, um, and yeah, remember my 
I'm going in with Mr. Linux Info. And the machine I'm going into is OS Flip. Okay. Um, now, the first thing I would check if I'm getting an NX error is I would type ls.x asterisk and see if there's any extra X authority things floating around. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm just going to remove uh, dot nx. Actually, dash r dot nx because this is a directory, and I'm going to remove dot x the X authority files, and I'm going to try this nx thing again here. And it looks like it's working this time. That cleared out those errors. And I'll pull this over. And here we are. We're now booted it back into Linux. Um, and we're, we connected. We actually did connect with the SSH here to clear things up so I could come in with the NX. Well, that's all there is to it in rebooting uh, from Windows 7 and being able to then log into Linux. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helps. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.